Okay, honestly, were we supposed to take those fucking names seriously? Ying Yang? Tall Road? Pain was a little weak, considering they kind of already did that in the video game series, you know? Also, trust me, very few people want to be reminded that there has already been a movie with a character named Pain. Not a good connection to make, guys. Lee Christmas Tool? And the whole thing with Bruce Willis saying, I know that your name really isn't Barney. But everybody calls him Barney, and apparently, according to the credits list, his name is Barney. It's maybe also just it's a kind of unfortunate name to use. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I think of the purple dinosaur. That or the fat-ass security guard in Half-Life. Fuck, Blue Shift suck. What a lousy expansion pack. Getting off topic, sorry. When we first see Charisma Carpenter, could she possibly have written... I am with another man anymore on her fucking forehead. They even have her looking back to check. I don't quite have the budget for this, but if anybody seeks to do a parody of that scene, may I make the suggestion that there be, you know, be, you know, grand dance number right in the background of that scene with the lyrics being, she's with another man, she's with another man, something like that. Because it could not possibly have been any more obvious. How the fuck could Statham tell that the guy was a jerk anyway? I mean, yes, he turns out to be a complete douche, but how could he tell? Oh, I really hate his voice. You shouldn't stay with him. He's bad for you. What, because of the way he says lace? Because of his voice? Don't you just love how he's the complete one-note takeover boyfriend jerk? We find out literally nothing about this guy whatsoever, and then when... Statham comes back, she's been hit, and then he goes to the basketball court. And in addition to wailing on that one guy, which is quite deserved, he beats the shit out of everybody on the fucking court. As if he somehow magically knows that they've done something to deserve it. I mean, yes, I heard the line too, you know, with whatever it is, we'll back you up. But seriously... To me, it didn't seem so much like they were fighting him and he was just defending himself. It kind of seemed like he just went a little bit nuts and beat the shit out of everybody in close proximity. Now you know what I do for a living. I beat up people at basketball courts. Yeah. It pays well. No insurance, though. Not enough basketball courts. I puncture a lot of balls. I did kind of like the sort of political message with, you know, it's the CIA guy that makes Sandra be waterboarded, and it's his fault about the drugs, apparently, somehow. What, was it, what the fuck was the Coco Field thing about? Was he really talking about drugs instead of Coco? Does he just have a really bad itch for a cup of hot chocolate? Why did they want that much chaos on the island? I mean, I get that, you know, using fear to suppress people, to keep them easy to control, you know, organized religion does that all the time, have been for, you know, 2,000 years or so, but they were just shooting randomly and smashing people's stores and shit. I mean, could it have been more obviously, these are the bad guys? I gotta admit, the thing with Sly with the six-shooter and Statham with the knives, that really worked. You know, I guess we'll call it even, that whole thing really worked. I do think the knife thing at the very end would have been cooler if it had, like, hit the camera almost. Like, the knife had just, you know, hit at the very center, so it felt like the audience really got a knife in their face. Instead of it just hitting at the very bottom, I don't know, maybe they couldn't do it. Could Sly's knife have been any more obviously CGI, or at least fake in some way, when he was twisting it in that guy near the end? I don't watch wrestling, but 
I do believe Steve Austin slipped into the wrestler voice when he was threatening, I think it was Sandra. You know, I half expected him to turn to the camera and say something along the lines of, This Saturday, Steel Cage Match! Something like that. I like the automatic shotgun. That bit where you look down the hallway and he's just running past, gunning people down along the way. That was fun. I do think that they should have thought of another way for him to, dis to dispatch the second tower. I mean, you have these two towers, the same guy shoots them with the same gun in the exact same way. I think it would have been cool if they had done something a little bit different for the second one. Maybe like right after Sly yells, I'm out! He responds, fuck, me too! And then like grabs a grenade from the belt, throws it, you know, Sly looks and sees, oh, it didn't reach the tower itself, it just landed at the foot of it, and he's like, what the fuck, did you miss? Then the grenade blows up, takes out one of the tower's legs, can't stand on the other three, so it falls over, and then and then Terry Crews responds, No, I just couldn't throw it that high. Something like that. The fights with Austin were pretty cool. Not sure I love his going out in a blaze of glory, if you will. I don't know, just the fire thing. Maybe if he'd been blown up or got the head shot off something. Did really like the warning shot with Gunner at the very beginning. It was like, oh, shot a little too low. Maybe maybe he's known or something, but to me it kind of came out of nowhere that that other goon, the one that wasn't Steve Austin, was suddenly a bit of a fighter. He hadn't really been built up as one. The scene with Lundgren in the office and, you know, with shotgun pointing at the guys, that was really, really stupid and just pure testosterone. There was no reason at all for anyone in that room to be, you know, all posturing and puffed up manly chests, egos. That was purely to have a scene like that. I do think Lundgren did better in The Universal Soldier, but, and hey, maybe it is a little more difficult to recapture this kind of thing, you know, 15, 20 years after the fact. You know, it's like when you make a noir movie today, you can make it really good, but it's still not going to be quite the same as one from the 40s or 50s, you know? Can somebody explain to me what the whole thing with the fucking painting was? Ah, your daughter paints too. This is how it begins. No, this is how it ends. What? Okay? Huh? And then later he paints himself and then, you know, all the soldiers have gotten face paint and that leads to absolutely nothing. They don't even protect him. You know, he goes out and has that big speech and stone cold and the other guys easily dispatch of those guards. Did anybody else, at least for like half a second, think that Maybe this speech was actually going to mean the ending of it, you know, and they just let Sly and company just walk out of there instead of a big stupid fight with these native soldiers who don't want to kill Sly and his buddies because they want the CIA douche gone just as much as they do. They being the native soldiers and they being Sly and his buddies. Did anybody else almost start to think that after Stone Cold saw the fire, that he actually walked over to pick up Eric Roberts and the girl and throw them over. Why was there oil for them to set fire to like that? How much fucking plastique did they bring to this island? Was the plane fucking loaded with it? Do you really need to place a charge on every single fucking pillar? Isn't that just a little bit overkill? I was a little disappointed that the banter between Sly and Arnie really didn't work, but I will say the line from Sly, you know, oh, he wants to be president, that was pretty fucking funny. You know, a little jab at Arnie for, you know, pursuing politics.